there, young lovers. It's Gary, and I'm coming to you from my living room here in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Tuesday, April the 27th, 2021, and this is video number 107. I know I just did a recording yesterday answering some crochet hook questions, uh, but today I'm jumping in here real quick to catch you up on some finished works and some works in progress, do a bit of a shout out and catch up on what I've been watching, uh, just a, a general overview, chit chat with all of my fiber friends. Uh, I'm going to also let people know that who have not visited me here before, that I live in the downtown area of Vancouver and my street outside is quite a busy one. We have some construction work going, so uh, bear with me for a little while. <laughs> And hopefully we'll be able to get through without too many interruptions or noises outside. Uh, for all of my fiber friends who are returning, welcome back. I've been loving all of your comments. I read through the 10 crochet hook question answers that other people have submitted in the comment section of the video that I released and uploaded yesterday. So that's been a lot of fun finding out a little bit more about your tool choices as well. And uh, yeah, for people who are just showing up, I've set this channel up to talk about my yarn journey, so that's everything knit, crochet. I do double in a little bit of hand dyeing and my acquisitions where I buy things either online or in store and I like to flag some savings as well if there are any sales out there uh, along the way. So if that kind of content uh, is of interest to you, please stick around. So let's get stuck into the finished objects of the week. I have two crocheted items and they are following both the same pattern. I uh, alluded to it in as a work in progress in my last podcast. I did a couple of rows of it and really had an exciting time choosing yarn for it. So if you're looking for a pattern for that creativity and you don't necessarily have the, the proper weighted yarn, I want to just let you know that your stash is probably more of an asset to you than you really think. So I'm going to talk about the yarn choices that I made uh, in combination to get the right weight to follow the pattern. So it is a crocheted pattern and it was generously gifted to me by our two friends down in Australia, Justine and Simone. Hi guys, uh, thanks so much for this pattern, it's amazing. And here is the printed copy of it. It is called the Cobblestone Cowl and the designer of the Cobblestone Cowl is Kay Adolfson. And uh, I've recently just explored and introduced myself to the other designs that Kay has and she is a phenomenal craftsperson who has come up and invented these amazing designs. So without further ado, let's look at uh, the first finished cowl that I showcased part of it in my last episode. It is done. So as you can tell, the cobblestone cowl has been given its name because the end result in the fabric looks like cobblestones. But in this instance, I'm using a, my main color is this blacks, uh, kind of a mild between black and white, making it look more like um, the night sky with stars. So this swoosh of color that goes through is made up from other uh, worsted weight yarn held together to make a super, super bulky six. And the main color here, the patent requests for a four ply, which is, I believe, a two weight yarn, but I didn't have the, the proper two weight yarn to begin with. So I made an error uh, to use a three weight yarn, which is an eight ply. Uh, so it is a slightly, I guess, out of sync to the patent's requests, but I really liked working up all of what I had in my stash and using my stash. So I'll try it on. But just one more close up of those little bumps that stick up. If you kind of look to it on the level, you see how it presses up through and gives it that name, the cobblestone cowl. So I'll try it on for you to see how, it's, how it sits and how I wear it, which is a double roll. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm, I've already got a twist in it. Let me just get that out of the way, there we go. Put that around and through the second loop. There we go, sounds like I'm crocheting with my hair, <laughs> whole body, through the second loop. And look at that, it folds up double, really, really nice. Uh, I guess there's many ways of uh, 
you know, attacking this to sit nicely within your own assemblage. Uh, let's talk about the yarn. So the main colour, as I mentioned, the three-weight yarn was from Lime Brand and it was Tweedledee in the colourway Licorice. And this one here is a combination of acrylic cotton, so 75 acrylic and 25 cotton. Uh, it uh, is a slightly rougher, I would say, uh, a rougher cotton uh, out there on the market to choose from. Uh, so I kind of liked it. It was uh, more more twiny and it was great for it to cut through the fluffier yarns that I held together. So as mentioned, I didn't have a super bulky six, which uh, calls for in the pattern. Uh, they were uh, showing in the pattern, the photographs that they were using Malabrigo and I believe it was called Rasta. And I'm just gonna double check. Yeah, Ra Rasta yarn. And uh, oh, the quantities that I used as well from this cake was the full cake to complete this uh, to complete the cowl and just to give you an idea of how many yards in your main color you'd need it's 310 yards or 285 meters then I went to make up my own super bulky six and this is what I came up with so one two three four and there is a fifth one where are you down here five so this is what I came up with in my Super Bulky 6 combo. I chose all sticky yarns that were either roving or chain spun with a fuzzy kind of like blast of, uh, of wool around a chain spun mesh and they all stuck together. They wanted to all become one. So I guess my suggestion if you are looking to create the cowl yourself and want to bust through some of your own stash. Uh, perhaps look for sticky yarns. That's what I call them, sticky yarns. More fibrous yarns that kind of like aren't sleek. Uh, if you choose a, a combination of sleek yarns, you might find that there might be some worming that happens as you work through your piece. And uh, if you are using scraps as well and you have lots of ends, those ends might pop out as well. Whereas where I found using my scraps that had more sticky nature to them, the ends wanted to stay in amongst all of the twists. So it helps to keep the uh, the cobblestones a little bit more precise and neat. So yeah, let's talk about the yarn that I made up for this combination of five worsted weight. In it is this beautiful yarn here from Willow Yarns and it is from their Quiver collection. The colorway is called Dapple Pond. So beautiful, nice blues in there. And I held that together with a couple of scraps, uh, over dyed here of Peyton's Denim yarn. And this one originally was tangerine, but I added in some extra color of uh, Scarlet to get a deeper orange and deeper reds in there. And I held again another Peyton's Denim yarn. This one also was tangerine and I over dyed it with purples and scarlet to get these berry, wild berry colors. The third one that I held, sorry, the fourth one that I held was this one here called Universal Yarns and it uh, was in their collection called Bamboo Bloom. And this one seriously has uh, a huge variance in their in its roving so it starts off in a very fine I'm gonna say a three light three and goes all the way to a fluffy five so yeah all of those were held together did I have any more in that range yes I did I had one more this ice yarns here was also held to complete this the five yarns that I held together to make the bulky six and this one is called wool cord Erin as you can see there's like some weird anomaly happening there. Uh, wool, wool cord Erin in the colorway fuchsia. So yeah, so really, really nice. I love the way that it uh, ended up like working up and super, super nice and cozy. It is quite a dense fabric. So maybe a garment that you would wear perhaps 
in cooler climates, not so much in summer. And again, one last look at those beautiful cobbles. Okay, the next one I did was in a different base color and it was slightly lighter, it was in a gray. Uh, here it is here. You might have seen some uh, photographs I left on Instagram of these, uh, of, the, of both of these uh, postings that I made, I think about four or five days ago. And I'll try this one on so that you can see how this one slightly is a little different to the other one. Really, really dash of color, like if you're wearing your, your garments. Uh, I like it twisted around twice because it, uh, it does fall quite long and drapey if you, don't, if you don't twist it and wear it twice. So this one, let's talk about the main color that I chose. So it was in this shiny silver color and it's from Yanbi. It was a yarn swap that I did with Kit from All Things Crochet and Knit with Kit. Hi Kit! And uh, she added this yarn into her box when we did the yarn swap. So it's called Sweet Divinity and the colorway is called Grey Clouds. It is a combination of acrylic and nylon, so 80% acrylic and 20% nylon. It is considered a four weight, but really it acts like a three weight, so a light three. And this is what I used for this particular piece. Uh, just to run through how many balls you would need of this if you were uh, going to make the cowl using the Sweet Divinity, you would need two balls. I completed one one whole ball and then a third of this ball here to complete the project and each of these balls are 3.5 ounce, uh, ounces which is 100 grams and it gives you 243 yards per ball so I'm going to say maybe around 320 yards uh, were needed to complete this uh, this cowl. Now the fun that I had with this one was I only used four, uh, four different yarns to make up the super bulky six because a few of them were already uh, classified as five weights. So here we have the second one. I'll just put them together so that you can see what I used. Okay, so these are the four in the second one. There we go. So slightly less orange in there. Actually, there's no orange in there at all, but um, really, really nice electric blue. And there was one uh, yarn that I uh, used up and it was um, Charisma, which is a Loops and Threads brand. And the colorway was called Northern Lights. So that one had lots of blues, dark blues, rich blues, and a little bit of a, like a khaki green in there an olive green. So what I have in this right now, this blend, was the Loops and Threads Waterford Big in a five bulky and it is also a considered a roving yarn with a light twist in this plum color it's called. I also added in this one here which is a Loops and Thread and it's their Eco Cozy and it has these flecks in it and it's called Lapis Flecked. I also had added in this yarn here, which I switched out because I had used the Charisma uh, Northern Lights, as I mentioned, and I ran out of that. So I replaced the, the, it with this one, which I don't know what it is. It's called Synergy, I believe, from, uh, from Hirschner's, but I don't have any uh, ball band for this to quote the color that I used. And again, I had used the Willow Yarns Quiver. I held that together in this piece as well. And it, the color it again is called the Dappled Pond. Really nice blues in that. So that's how it worked up. So I'm really impressed with 
just the creativity that you could use uh, to work up your own super bulky six using the stash that you have at home and uh, so we'll take another look at that there's the the cobbles there and again those are the two I'm thinking what I might do with these is make a few more because I have a lot of stash that I could bust through holding the fuzzy yarns together and uh, maybe put them into a little bit of a shop somehow like whether I, I choose to make an Etsy shop or do a little bit of a I don't know a online sale of some sort because I really like the way that they work up and they're so much fun now on to the works in progress. I've got two knitted works in progress for the week that I've started and one of them is in my Make 9 card that I created for 2021. Now the Make 9 card is a bit of a wish list or a call to action if you're out of ideas of what you want to make. Uh, so at the beginning of the year which is uh, 2021 I sat down and thought about what kind of items I'd like to uh, challenge myself to make and uh, so I came up with the nine for the make nine card 2021 and this one was a, uh, a featured item in there so I'm up to the fourth one in my my fourth one in my make nine card uh, so not a stressful thing at all it is uh, meant to be there for a call to action if you don't if you run out of ideas and you want to challenge yourself so I am choosing to uh, use this one here which is a knit pattern from Fiona Alice and it's called Caramel Denim Fair Isle and this pattern here is uh, for a jumper that ranges from I'm gonna say from an age three and it goes all the way up to an age uh, eight here in the in the pattern diagram that you use as well so I'm making this for my little niece and uh, she is turning uh, She's turning five next year, and uh, so the, the jumper will be uh, ten, intended for winter of 2021 to 2022, uh, with a little bit of room to grow as she gets older. So here is the choices of color that I'm using, and I've started the first panel here, and it's sort of curling up a bit. I've got to block it. But it uses color work, hence the name, it's a Fair Isle uh, jumper. And so the, these are showing the, um, the bottom waistband will be done in this kind of like colorway here, patterning. And then the body of the work is in uh, a speckled yarn. And I'm coming up to the point where the chess piece has a beautiful colorway, uh, uh, color work and I'm learning so much about uh, color work in the flat because I'm used to color work in the round uh, so I am finding it quite interesting to read the chart while, when I turn my work in the reverse and because I can't continental pearl and, con and uh, English throw like I can on the right side of the work I have to uh, do two passes on the back side so I, I pearl the necessary stitches uh, with the one color and slip all the ones that uh, the color is waiting in the wings to make the second pass on so that is uh, how I'm working the wrong side and slipping the work from one side to the next and then back again to make the second pass with the second color uh, it is quite an interesting challenge to read the chart uh, knowing which side of the work that I'm on uh, but I'm getting the grasp of it so I'm really enjoying the learn of this of this make here and uh, the yarn that I'm using for the colors is I can choose up to five colors but I really feel that I only need four so I'm not, I'm not I haven't made a choice yet of what colors for the 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 chess part where the decorative work will be done but I have a selection of all of these colors here because I don't need too much as the piece is only quite small but my main color that I'm using in the speckles is 
this colour here, uh, yarn that I had purchased from Hovium, and it's their Gazelle Unicorn, and it's really, really soft, and it's working out so wonderful. So uh, my little niece, I think she's going to love it. She requested a yellow jumper being the next item that she she wants from me, and she's also requested a hood. So I'm the pattern doesn't call for a hood, but I might ha actually uh, add that in as a feature, uh, an extension or a re revision to the jumper. The other yarns that I have in this make uh, in this bag here of choices are from. Let me see. Are from a variety of different yarns, but they're all loops and threads meandering serpentine. So there we go. So I'm adding that in to the mix as well, uh, trying to utilize some of the scraps and get through, bust through these as well. Uh, it's working out really nice. I'm enjoying the learn and I'm so happy with that Gazelle Unicorn yarn. It's just so light and fluffy and really there's no weight to it at all and it will be a warm garment because it has that nice uh, fuzz to it. I believe it is a superwash merino. Let me just check. Ba, ba, ba. Yes, 100% superwash merino. Uh, so that's good for care instructions for mum and dad when they need to wash this garment. They can just throw it into the washing machine on delicate and uh, lay flat to dry. So it'll be dry in no time at all because it's quite an airy and uh, yeah, an airy and roving styled yarn. So it's quite light. The second thing that I'm on working on is another knitted pattern. Uh, it actually isn't a pattern, it's just me knitting. Uh, and I'm working up a scarf. Right now I have around, what is that, an arm's length? Probably I'm gonna say two and a half to almost three feet, no, two and a half feet. It's like two and a half feet and I've completed my first ball of yarn and it's self-striping and it goes through its uh, repeats and it's really, really soft. I love, I love how it's working up and I'm working it in the tube. No pattern. It is uh, just me knitting up uh, a tube of maybe, at a guess, 45 stitches, maybe 44, 45 stitches. And I'm using a set of uh, Knitter's Pride and it's in their Dreams. I believe the size, I can read the US, but I don't know what the US size is. I think it's a US size seven here. So I think that might be a, is that a five millimeter? I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, it's working up a nice fabric, really drapey and squishy. Love it, love it so much. And the yarn that I'm using was a premier yarn that I purchased uh, when they had a sale on their, their DK, everyday DK yarn and it's the anti-peeling, there it is there. And I probably will use two of these to get a nice length scarf, maybe two and a half. The colorway is called Popsicle Speckle and each of the balls has, what does it have? 100 grams and in that you get 250 meters or 273 yards. So, and it's 100% anti-peeling acrylic. Really, really nice and soft and I love the colors. I have another ball of this in a different colorway and I'm thinking what I might do with uh, the leftovers of whatever is left in the third ball, joining and combining it with the other colorway and what it looks like is it repeats five different colors in uh, these uh, stripes that are probably about an inch uh, thick and I might decide to alternate the two colorways and so where this kind of hot pink is uh, knit from this uh, popsicle color and then choose the next ball which is a different colorway to add in here and just work up inside the tube carrying the two colored yarns together and alternate each stripe. I think that might actually work up to be 
quite a surprise in how the colors are. Instead of being five, there will be 10 different striped colors and see how that works up. So that's probably gonna be my next little test with the, the Premier DK uh, anti-peeling yarn. Now, I think that's all that I have to catch you up on with the works in progress and also uh, the finished works. I'm super happy about that crochet pattern too. It was awesome. A little bit of a story. So on Instagram, the designer Kay, uh, she uh, reposted my photographs and I was a little bit like, ah fanning away there with thinking, oh my goodness, the designer had noticed that I actually had put that up on my Instagram and reposted. So it's a little bit of um, uh, my brush with like, I don't know, someone out there that's quite a talented and brilliant person. So thank you Kay for doing that. Now, the next thing that I wanna catch you up on is a couple of shout outs. And I've written down some notes here so I don't get anything wrong and if I do because sometimes my chicken scratch is a little hard to read uh, I have some shout outs so uh, our friend Dala now she's from Canada as well hi, hi Dala she is uh, celebrating her 3000 subscriber milestone and her YouTube channel is called the crafty yarn owl so I want to do a bit of a shout out to her and congratulations on reaching that milestones uh, and the next one here I have is Martin now Martin is from the UK I believe specifically he's from Wales and he has the most interesting accent I love listening to him he's got a podcast called uh, knit 365 or 365 and uh, I've just been noticing on he's a superb knitter uh, he's challenges himself with so many different uh, patterns out there and I love the challenges that he sets for himself and recently he's just started crocheting as well and uh, yeah so he's tackling quite an intricate uh, granny square blanket with all different sizes that somehow need to be matching up and uh, creating like straight edge uh, straight angle edges at the end so I wish him all the well and best of luck in doing that because my granny squares seem to always go wonky uh, the next person is Michael now Michael is uh, part of a knit night that I attend and he's got a YouTube channel called peace for peace crafting and uh, his podcast is all about wonderful knits that he uh, dabbles in in different patterns he's got brilliant color sense uh, so hi Michael and uh, the next, third and final one here that I have written in a long list of in my book is just <laughs> got so many like podcasters that I want to watch and continue following is Stuart from the wool patch now he's also from the UK he owns his own yarn store over there so he covers things like what's new in his store as well as makes and crafts that he gets into uh, he does uh, lots of knitting but also gets a lot of support from his community over there in the UK who uh, does wonderful knits in the yarns that he sells and then uh, they will be showcased in his podcast so hi Stuart so those are a few shout outs now what have I been doing <laughs> uh, other than watching YouTube and television well I did want to do a little bit of a um, like a I guess a television series that I've been watching as well which I find super fascinating and if you're interested in finding something to glue your eyeballs to for the next little while as you are knitting or crocheting uh, in your in your projects is for all mankind now it is an Apple TV series I'm not too sure if you don't have Apple TV how you would uh, reach out and get the series but it's all about astronauts uh, race to the moon set in the 1960s uh, it takes a spin on real-time things that happen and real characters and events uh, over the course of the 1960s but it takes a spin and superimposes what if moments if things like people uh, were still around that aren't anymore and uh, perhaps maybe the um, the race to the moon was uh, was superseded from the Americans to the Russians uh, so it, there is that dynamic of like but what ifs 
And I really enjoy the, it's like a parallel universe and how they are unfolding the, the, the history of this particular parallel. So uh, if you're interested in any of that stuff, that's, uh, that's what I would suggest for you to watch. Uh, I also wanted to do a shout out here to Kevin and Ray who host the Men's Knit Night and we just had another one this past Saturday gone by and it was a lot of fun. There were, I don't know, maybe around 30 people in the Knit Night and again, super lots of fun, lots of uh, wonderful makes that people showed and yeah, we had a great conversation. So looking forward to the next one, guys. I will also include Kevin and Ray's Needles at the Ready podcast details down below if you uh, wanna go across and see, check out their channel. Okay, anything else that I have mentioned along the way, patterns, yarn, uh, podcasters, uh, I will always put them down in the description box. If I've forgotten anything down there, please give me a friendly nudge and say, hey, can you, um, make sure that you add that in. Uh, I am reasonable <laughs> with all of those requests. So uh, with that, I will bid thee farewell. Before I get going though, I wanna show you one last thing. So you know I have a Teespring store, which is a merchandise branding online company that uh, you upload your uh, merch illustrations or graphics and they put them on different things. So I've been working diligently on testing and getting some uh, uh, test samples of uh, my next a garment that I, that I, or graphic that I'm putting on some merchandise. And you saw a little bit of this in a giveaway that I had a couple of, maybe a month ago. And uh, here it is. So it's a design that I've put on to some t-shirts and some other knickknacks like there's a sticker and there's a notions pouch and there's also a canvas bag as well. So it's um, playing on the words that I normally say when I'm reviewing yarn and this one is no undergarments required uh, with, uh, I'll show you again, it has little Buddha here which is a super happy chappy because the yarn that he has, there are no undergarments required for that as well. So a little bit of, you know, humor, good, good humor, tongue in cheek sort of stuff. And that's now available on the Teespring store, which is also included down in the description box. Should you like to go and support the channel and purchase one of those items. So with that, I want to say, Farewell, and I hope that everyone has a great evening. I'll catch you up probably next week. We can plan on maybe another video. And uh, everyone stay safe, stay well, and till next time, bye.